Shipping first in a very mighty way. Look at that, 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 look at that. Look at that. The visitation of the Lord has arrived here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody now, beginning from here, look at that. Now lift them. There is a visitation here. The glory of the Lord is here. Okay, look at how the Lord is going to take the worship team. Everybody watch there now. Watch there, look there. <laughs> there you go. One time, in a tremendous vision, I just realized there was a very huge, humongous, historic and shocking statue standing before me. And I could see its feet of clay and iron. What Huge, unbelievable. So, so even to see it alone shocked me. Because I asked, what is this? However, then, in that vision, let me give the specific, in that vision, from this direction here, while inside there. And not like this, but came like this. Came a rock. In fact, that rock, I can even draw it. It has a sharp edge. It's a, ro it's a rock. It's a rock, but with a sharp edge. Did not come like this. Actually, came slanting like this. A rock came from that side where the Lord was. I knew the Lord was there. And that rock smashed that statue until it became like chaff it disintegrated and the dust the lord made the dust sweep me the dust of that statue sweep me so i could feel the dust follow me on this now so the statue humongous unbelievable made of different metals and then smashed like this and the dust even blows on me and then after that as i was standing in that was then when the lord showed it to me in 2004 i thought it was the ocean because all of a sudden th that rock that smashed became a huge mountain and i found that i did not have where to stand I, I thought i was because it was light blue bluish down there i thought it was an ocean i thought i was going to fall into the ocean I, it looked like an ocean then now i'm wiser filled the whole earth i did not have where to put my feet I thought I was going to fall like this into the ocean. Only when I went now into the Bible is when I realized, no, that was actually the, 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 the universe, the other side, not the ocean. And that 
conversation he had with Daniel is in the book of Daniel chapter 2 verses 34 35 then you hear the conversation the dream and then the interpretation is verses the same chapter 2 verses 44 45 he's saying that at that time the God of heaven will establish forth a kingdom and he says and that kingdom will not be left to any other people again that rock that small rock that came and smashed that kingdom that the, 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 the mountain built was the kingdom of God the symbolism of the kingdom of God that that rock smashing the statue would create would build establish install that totally covers the entire earth the kingdom of God the coming kingdom of God but look at this now there's finer detail to that meaning you see a rock cut out but not by human hands meaning in the establishing of the kingdom of god there will not be a human hand hallelujah oh he has sent us he has called us to do these things here to come and trumpet this for him to be his mouthpiece to pastor that church whatever but the kingdom of god has its own And whenever a pastor in Namibia and Vindhoek is given the opportunity, I call it the privilege, the humbling privilege to pastor a church, then it is as such. It is that. It is a privilege. So it is not your church. I know there's a bit of mis I'm going to come to the church in Namibia. As you can tell, I have so much knowledge. He has shown me everything in the church. I'm going to come to that. But let me just clear this. The, a rock cut out but not by human hands. We are simply servants within that kingdom. That kingdom. I know you like to say we are kings within a kingdom. Okay. Whichever thing you say. But I want to submit unto you that we are servants in that kingdom. And he's saying we will simply operate under the command and the instruction and under the paradigm set up by God. So it will not be built of human nature. So if you were me, that is the point at which to ask the church in Namibia, then what is the human hand doing in the church in Namibia? If you were me, that's the question you can ask there in passing. In passing, as I pass. Because that's not our topic of discussion today. That is not the message I brought you. But yes, it is. In, 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 by bearing, by bearing, I was running through. It is. He's saying, then what is the humanness doing in the glorious eternal kingdom of God that is in the church? Then what is the pride, the pride doing at the pulpit where you feel you are the one building it for God? You feel really it is you. God has to depend on you. Ah. Remember there are 7,000 who have not yet done what? And worship Baal. Always remember that. Always remember that God can shock you. you that, that's why for me, my instruction, my, the brief that sent me is very clear. To say it as has been said by him. As it is. Whether, when it hurts you, the better. That means it's working. Hallelujah. Because if it does not hurt you, when the church is in this condition I see in Namibia here, then there is a problem. You need to go back to the Lord and ask for the message. A privilege, he says. It's privilege. It's humbling to be told. That's why I started by saying, it is so humbling, a privilege, to be sent to you. Because these are matters of eternity. That are unpurchasable. Unpurchasable. Cannot buy with money. Yeah, these, these are serious issues of the creator. So this is not the message for the day. Can I run through them because of time? But you can see already. He's saying that there is a kingdom that is coming. That's why I am here. And he says, repent. And prepare the way. For the kingdom of God is in hand. And he said that kingdom will last forever and ever. Has no end. So even 
Even as you like to make profit, to be profitable in Namibia here, the things you do, you want to prosper. You want to grow in it. You want to profit in it. So he's saying, this is the most profitable thing to do, to prepare for that eternal kingdom now with your 70 years here. It's profitable. It is worthy to spend the short time we have to prepare for that eternal one. It, we will benefit bigger by preparing for that which does not end. Because they're running around barbecue here, discos, what, drinking alcohol, whatever. That is short-lived like this. In fact, people, you, th those who are wise, they will almost feel sorry for you. So, no, but this is so short-lived. Why would you invest in that? And destructive. He said, there is a kingdom that is coming. And that's why I am here. It is called the kingdom of God. And he says, will not be left to any other people. It is for those who walk in that way. The people of the Lord. Hallelujah. So there is so much there. It's a whole message on its own accord. But I just wanted you to know that the Lord spoke. He spoke in 2004. He spoke recently on 17th. 17th of this month in fact i am giving you hot bread from the throne of my father recently he spoke it so really it is important to him i don't know why when i'm coming to namibia and then he speaks it so sometimes i also want to understand deeper things you understand as i'm about to leave to airport actually you are waiting for me outside right to come so we got the airport then you are shocked i'm on live on radio right so, so some of these things you may want to understand deeper why is he saying, go read there and announce the coming of the kingdom of God from Windhoek? What is the message then? But we know the instruction that we need to prepare. The nations need to prepare. And we know how to prepare. I'm going to give deeper instruction here. However, we know that for without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. You see that? So really, God is so good. He put everything in the Bible for us. We can literally prepare and make substantive gain and enter. And as a pastor, how do you then prepare as a pastor? How do you prepare the sheep when you yourself, you have not yet entered? So really, the first call is at the pulpit, right? So that you can now lead them to that which you've entered in. That which you know, you know, right? Hallelujah. May 17th, 2004. May 17th, 2004. Look at this now. In that dream, I'm standing this way. I'm looking up into the sky. And then, on my right hand side, actually I was facing this other side. It was like this. It was on this side, the right hand side. On the right hand side of the sky, all of a sudden, I hear the trumpet sound. And I have repeated this live globally, on live broadcast. I know how the trumpet, I know the sound of the trumpet that will sound. Can I repeat it here today? The trumpet sounds like this. The trumpet sounds. Let me repeat it. On this other side of the sky, when I was facing this way. And when the trumpet sounded that way, then I heard the throne announcement. So that voice you hear actually is a throne announcement. If you go to the throne, normally there is when something is going to happen, there is somebody that announces the throne announcement and the voice said look the Lord is about to appear in the sky and you know very well that the Bible the book of John chapter 5 and few you can read further on from verse 21 28 it says and those who will hear meaning not all will hear and those who will hear, who will hear, who will have the those who will be in the spirit, those whose ears will be circumcised to hear. Oh yes, this is a spiritual voice. Yeah, how do you be in the flesh, in the earthly, in the physical, and you want to hear a spiritual voice? So you understand, I have so much message for Namibia. You really do understand. I've come to tell Namibia that there is going to be a spiritual voice. And there's going to be a spiritual trumpet and not everybody will hear on the earth. It will be for those who walk in that way. Those who have received the spirit. Those who will be in that format. So hence, to ask the church, what are you doing in the flesh? What are you doing in the flesh, in the kernel? 
when it, it will only be for those that will be in that form huh? spiritual to hear for me i have had all the detail so i can really pour it to you like this and i've seen the church taken also but say look the lord look the lord is about what be in the sky so when i looked aside then the cloud opened like this and because it is not the event the lord just wanted to show me how it will take place to send me to you then look at what happened when he appeared one thing shocked me immediately he said look the lord is about to appear in the sky look at this now the cloud opens then he steps forward look at this now and then when he stepped forward, the first thing that shocked me most this time around he has a crown this time around he has a crown and that's the message namibia that is the message the church in namibia because i'm asking when i look at the church of christ in namibia i see and i hear you know he brings me before he has i've seen real detail a lot of detail at the pulpit and it's bad it's one of the worst cases of sin but i'm saying when i look at the church in namibia i see and i hear as though she's saying no no lord please return jesus to the cross look we are born again but we are not delivered but in this dream here when the lord himself appeared to me on the right hand side of the sky he did not come to go back to the cross he has a crown hey he did not he did no i saw the crown he is not coming back to calvary to die for sins excuse me then why is the church in namibia saying look the first calvary is not enough for us because he's saying when you look at the condition of the church today 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 it is as though the church is crying for a second deliverance it's as though the church is saying look the first calvary that blood did not have enough power to deliver me and they are crying out to the father father look we are in the church but look we are not yet delivered we are still in sexual sin we are still lying with false prophets in namibia namibia is number one with false apostles and i know them because i have encountered them i have had an altercation with them namibia is the place where the false apostles teach people how to fall they say it's like uh, riding a motorcycle you are be taught how to fall so that you don't get hurt and get up or like running b b rugby football you'll be taught how to fall so you don't get i heard those things i hear those things here how which gospel is that which gospel is that no you tell me where do you find it there that you have to teach people how to fall so when you look at that condition of the church in namibia it's a condition that's crying out say lord look the first calvary did not have enough power for namibia maybe it's delivering kenya but namibia has stubborn sins sins that cannot be delivered resistant sins and immune sins lord send jesus again when you hear them when you see them when you see them and you hear them you hear them crying for a second calvary they say the first blood is not strong there you go now because in this tremendous dream when the lord appears like this i am shocked he has a crown he is not going back to calvary he's not he's saying when he when the the, the trumpet and the voice sounds when he walked forward and look at what he did as long as he was sure that i focused on him he did this he took his right hand 
his right hand and he showed it to me he showed me the nail pierce he showed me the nail pierce on the hand I understand later I understood better because he was actually introducing himself to me formally you're not seeing an angel you're not seeing anybody else it is I that died for the church that you are seeing and also the other thing about it is saying look you 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 know from where you know when the Lord speaks with you in this form he also transmits certain messages to your heart to understand better what is being said he also made me know that in that showing look I am so accomplished. I'm so satisfied that I did it. Meaning, given a second chance, I would do it again for the church. Did you understand me properly? He's saying, given a second chance, if I were told to do it again, I would still do it the same way. Ah! But when I read the Bible, the Bible in the book of Isaiah 52, this is what he says. This is tremendous for the church in Namibia. Verse 14. Isaiah 52, and I'm reading verse 14. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form destroyed and marred beyond human likeness. He looked like a beast on the cross. Meaning, he did not look like man anymore. Man, no, 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 no. He looked like a beast when he was hanging on that cross. But when you read the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 5, he says, the animals you choose must be here old males without defect. Meaning, blameless. Blameless. Without blame. He's saying that there is a law, there is an eternal law that is in the upper chambers of justice, justice of God in heaven. The upper chambers, you can call it the supreme court of heaven. The upper chambers of justice of God, they, there is a law there that was passed. And that law said the following. It said, God is holy. Number two, those who drafted it up there, they said, and if God is holy, then the wages of sin is death. The judgment, the sentencing was done. And he said that, again, that same law continued to say, that there is, there is action and consequence. Meaning, meaning the following. The wages of sinning, sin, the consequence is what? Death. Look at this now. Then he says, in that same law, he says, however, there can be two types of death. Either a man pays for his own sin, so that that law is fulfilled the wages of sin become death or a man enters himself into a contract into a covenant into an arrangement where there is a substitute death <laughs> where somebody else is gonna have to die for us hey, to fulfill that law there must be death either you must die or somebody else will die for you and he says however in that same law if you choose that somebody else die for you substitute you and die for your sins then he says that somebody else who must die for you must bear the following must be blameless without defect eh? he's saying if somebody else now has to die for you, that somebody else must fulfill the law. The law of the perfect sacrifice of God. Without defect. How powerful. He said, now, 
if you surrender yourself if you believe now and accept him and say, for all there is there are for no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus excuse me don't sing it like a song let me explain it to you first yeah let me explain it to you first there is there are for no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus meaning being in christ jesus christ is holy so you are holy then you are in christ jesus did you understand me properly it is not a song for singing no 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 no. you have to leave it yes i know the lord has spoken with me that's why i give it to you did you understand me so he's saying that if christ jesus in the upper chambers of justice he already stepped forward like this he said when the law was being pronounced in heaven and he lifted his hand like this and he said now for all those however for all those who are in the family of god israel and the church look i pay the surety i now pay for it meaning for those in the church that will believe in him he says those who love me obey my excuse me it is not a song you have to obey that's why this is a blessed day i said because this now the foundation for revival is being laid no this revival as you have seen is actually a holy revival it's not about money checks in the mail whatever the country is wealthy enough already yeah god already put you here so you can now live your life but excuse me i'm talking about deliberations on the matter's eternity those that transcend beyond nationality and race and what they transcend beyond the u.s federal reserves what with many trillion dollar what unpurchasable event he's saying he stepped forward he stepped forward and said look even if i still even if i look at the church like that look look now look i am still happy that i did it but but when i read from isaiah 52 it says no human being has ever ever been disfigured like him that's what i read look at this now that's the message the church in namibia now look at this now the church in namibia is crying for a second calvary second deliverance but look at this now i have come to announce the church uh -uh, forget it he now has a crown he is not coming to walk by the byways of Windhoek preaching the gospel to be abused and blackmailed. No, 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 no. He now has a crown. He's coming as a triumphant king. That's why you hear the trumpet. You hear the announcement of the throne. He is coming with glory, pomp, and color. As a victorious king. He's coming as a victorious king. So, look at this now let us say that jesus is who he is as compassionate as he is to the church and he looks at the condition of the church in namibia where there is sexual immorality abortions the apostles are doing money the apostles are sleeping with women they are lying they are doing what the false prophets are what some of you are important from south africa zimbabwe whatever they are lying here women checks the mail they, they do things people run without slippers writing checks like this let us say that jesus looks at that mess in the church and says look i want to go back to calvary to deliver the church in namibia look at what will happen then he says but the law of the perfect sacrifice of god which is run by god the father himself will not allow him already he has defect he has defect on his body because of you now he has defect he cannot be accepted the father cannot accept him because there is a law that governs perfect sacrifice right now so so right now he has defect because of you so you cannot ask for a second calvary in namibia so no in windhoek we are special namibia you know we are special people that's why we need him to go again ah no let us just be born again with this first calvary because it's the ultimate sacrifice do you know what that means when you say it's ultimate sacrifice the book of hebrews chapter 6 4 to 6 that's what it means hebrews chapter 6 4 to 6 will explain to you why 
he cannot be accepted why there will be no, no second calvary why let us just be born again with this first one here let us not play around there will not be a second one he's coming with a crown i've not described the whole vision how he walks across the sky first of all how he takes that hand after showing me then he prepares the crown at that corner i've not even discussed that you see that i'm just here and you see there is already a message to namibia he tell namibia excuse me why are you clamoring and crying around for a second calvary just be born again with the first blood the first calvary please stop that dream that is a nightmare it's a dream it's a hoax there will not be a second calvary let us just decide tonight that we are receiving the lord we are becoming born again and it be sealed here and it's done don't bank on some whimsical notions that you might have a second calvary i have seen him he has a crown he has a crown now mm. and it's a golden crown it's not a crown of thorns not at all okay, can i read it for you hebrews chapter 6 4 to 6 this is what he says it is impossible if i wear you and i meet the word impossible i underline it he says it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened who have tasted the heavenly gift who have shared in the holy spirit who have tasted the goodness of the word of god and the powers of the coming age they have seen it they have tasted it they have seen transfiguration they have seen things that generation has seen these things he says it is impossible meaning it is not possible god says god when God says it is not possible, it means it will not be possible at all. He says, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, those who have tasted the heavenly gift, those who have shared in the Holy Spirit, those who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance because to their loss, they are crucifying the son of god whose name is jesus all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace public shame people are saying wow she's doing like that she's sleeping with men hmm? and i'm told she's a christian wow ah, that jesus that, that jesus has no power she's a christian wow hey he's saying namibia the church Namibia, the body of Christ, Namibia, the pulpit, should not wait for a second Calvary. I have seen him with a golden crown, and he took his hand and he showed me, look, I cannot go back. Look, go to Namibia and tell them, now I have defect. Even if I wanted to go back, I cannot be accepted. Even if I wanted to go back for Namibia, at this moment I can tell you, I cannot be accepted because I already have defect to the extent that he said when when they asked him in heaven these wounds and injuries where do you meet them from he shied away he said oh I, I, I visited a friend of mine down there and I, while I was there I got injured in his house I got injured in his house yeah he is injured and i want to share with you one thing i want to tell you one thing when he was calling me when the day he walked into the house when he came to touch me physically touch me actually lift me up he lifted me from one room and left me in the other room so i walked back but anyway look at this now what shocked me most i had been refusing to go for many years i was actually fighting god without knowing i was fighting god that, that's just how delusionary this life can be right listen to this story i was fighting god i was refusing to go can you imagine god almighty was speaking with me and it's as if i did not understand who was talking to me ah he will kill you then right he can kill you or he can put you in the stomach of a fish right he can do anything he has that capacity and when he does that he will still remain god yeah it will not change him remain God did you understand that I did not understand that part so I was fooling around but the day when he decided to make a move and walk into the house what happened is this this was now the, 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 the bedroom where I was and this was the door and I always know it was the left hand 
because from the door when he pushed the hand when he pushed the hand and put on the door this is how he did it like this so the palm was facing the wall that's how i knew it was the left hand the palm was facing the wall so it did like this and the entire of that part became glorious unbelievable and then what shocks me most which shocks me until today is the fact that when i looked at the nail pierce at that place it looked first of all i saw the hem can i describe a little bit more okay the garment look over here when they said the hem of his garment it is not a joke so the garment actually the design is this i'm describing it now it goes like a v-shape here the design on it is like v here like this and then they are like gold sh shiny shinier gold diamond like shiny ones as if embroidered put like this like this like on it on that part on that part and then down like this from where i was looking i thought it was dust gold dust of gold I thought it was dust of gold until I looked at the bottom down and I saw small nice little balls around it. Ah, I'm sharing the secrets of heaven, right? Yes. So they were actually, in fact, I thought it was the dust of gold, but those were very fine strings. Very, very fine. You would think they are dust of gold. And at the end of it, until I looked at the end, I thought they were dust. At the end of it, they are very, very tiny, wonderful gold, balls, golden balls at the end on that so they were moving a little bit like that at the but what touched me most the reason i'm sharing this when i looked at the place of the nail pierce i was so shocked until this day the wound i saw it's as though it is still fresh yes that thing crushed me i wept for many months i wept for three months until i became i lost voice yeah in fact that is what made me finally live finally say yes i, I will go now so that shocked me very much because I began to understand that hey, in this life we may never ever understand the price he paid. Because I kept asking the Lord after that dream every single day, Lord, why is that wound fresh? Why hasn't that wound healed by now? Ah! Did you understand me properly? Yes. For me, that is normally a point of weeping. Because I don't understand now. I cannot synthesize that. Could it be that the Messiah is still paying the price? I don't understand. For me, in my limited understanding, I don't understand this. Why was that wound fresh? So I, I, when I woke up, I kept going before the Lord. Lord, why is the wound still fresh? Why was it fresh when he put it there? But what I'm saying is this. Now, he cannot go back. He has a scar. And that scar, look at this now. When he appeared, it is his identity. That is how he identified himself to me. It is now part of his identity. He uses it to identify himself. Meaning, I am still happy that I did it. Even if I see the church. Because the question is this now. When I look at the Lord... He has come now in the sky to talk to me. I see the injuries and the scars and the wounds of the work he did at Calvary. The travail of the Messiah. But my question then is this. If the price was that heavy, then the question is this. Where is the church for which he paid such an eternal price in Namibia? Where is that church? That is my question. If the price is as horrendous, if what he paid for cannot be described in this life, that the king of glory can bring his glorious feet and walk on our dusty roads and be blackmailed and abused by his own, the people he has come to redeem, the people he created, his own rejected him and they beat him and butchered him and slaughtered him less than a dog. If the Messiah can pay that horrendous price, then the question is, but however, where is the church, the church 
in Windhoek, Namibia, in Namibia, where is that church for which he prayed? He paid such an unbelievable price. Where is that church? Can somebody tell me where that church is? Did you understand me now? Did you understand me today? Have you now understood why I have come? And now you begin slowly to understand why he has sent me here. He said, run there. Run there. They got it wrong. They will miss it. You just run there. And it is love. Love. The love of God. He's saying, the price we can see, the wounds we can see, the scars we can see. You can imagine that body, the scars. But where is the price for which the Messiah paid such a horrendous, unbelievable price? Mine is simple because for me, mine, those are personal encounters. But guess what? They are for you. They are not for me. I am just for transmitters, to transmit to you. That, excuse me, there are some wounds, there are scars, and they are now defects. Defects. So he cannot even go back and be accepted. He says, no, 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 no. You, you now have defect. Hey! Because the law of perfect sacrifice says that lamb must be a male, a normal healthy male without defect. Meaning, blameless. Without blame, without sin. Did you understand me properly, beloved people? So he's saying, in that dream, look at this now. I'm simply going through the conversations he has been having over time that you have not heard. So, in the, after, after he, he showed the nail pierced hand, gl glorious nail pierced, and then this is what he did. He took that hand and he prepared the golden crown. And then he began to walk across the sky like that. He walked towards the leftmost corner. Follow me on this now. When he reached the left end, he turned again. But so when he walked, even just to see him walking, that was the most powerful, the most blessed, the most joyful, the most, uh, the most wonderful sight I have ever beheld. As you can imagine for yourself. He was now walking here. And so when he reached the end, he turned again and faced me. That May 17th. 2004 look at this now he now faced me and he took the other hand the other hand and showed the nail pierce again he knew i was focused i was paying attention and then he took that hand and prepared the crown again with now the other hand the golden crown look at this now but as he was walking like this like this this way every single place the lord put his foot on like this and on like this it remained a footprint in fact i could see everywhere step a footprint of glory 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 ah. 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 that's the first time i understood wow the king of glory brought his glorious feet on our dusty roads on our muddy with mud muddy roads and then we are abused him we equaled him with us and abused huh and killed him less than any other human being so what before he reached the end what shocked me most is that as he walked i was so shocked because every place is step like this and step like this in fact i could see exactly the exact location location okay we he had stepped it remained a footprint of glory, 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 glory until he reached the end. And when he reached the end, look at this now. He turned like this, took the other hand, he showed it to me, and then he took it and prepared the golden crown. So at that point, for some reason, I cried out. For some reason, I cried to him. I said, Lord, please take me with you. For some reason, I began to understand it's about walking. He's about to walk back into heaven. So for some reason, so for some reason I cried. I said, Lord, please take me with you. Lord, these are the exact words I said. Lord, please take me with you. And I heard as if the voice was saying, your time is not yet. But you know what shocked me most that made me weep? Is that when it was that beholding, that beautiful, that awesome, that's, now the Lord is here, finally is here. Then, 
what 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 shocked me most is after i did that when i was trying to cry like that and then he turned slowly like this and he stepped his foot like this and like this and and the cloud came and just covered like this namibia for me i want to enter that kingdom so that i can sit with abraham with isaac with jacob the patriarchs of israel the patriarchs of the nation of israel that were never allowed before to eat with gentiles the patriarchs of israel sit with them at that dinner table and the lord is right there and enjoy the wedding dinner, the wedding supper, the wedding feast of the Lamb of God. I know you don't want to go to hell. No, that's why you are sitting here today. Because you don't want to tell the Lord, but Lord, you know, the church in Namibia was wicked. My pastor never taught these things. You don't want to say so. You know that that will not deliver you on that day. That's why you are sitting here. You say, I want to take it myself, and then I just enter. Because on matters of eternity, there is no debate no you are going to stand alone there you will not say oh my pastor where are you come and be my, my my defender here no you will stand you will not say but my pastor never taught me my, but my pastor never went when the man of god came no that will not be excuse excuse me you just prepare and enter matters of eternity are personal even your husband cannot determine it for you please even your wife cannot determine your eternity for you. Those things are personal. You will not enter as a group, as a worship team. You will not. You will not say, now you see my children. Your son might enter and you don't. Your daughter might enter and don't. You might enter, they don't. Your husband might enter, you don't. And if God help you, you enter as a family, it will strictly be personal effort on that group. That's why he talks about five wise virgins. Remember, each one of them stands like this. But because they walk in that way, those who walk in that way, they go in the same direction. Hey! Have you understood? So, I have come to announce to the church in Namibia that now I have seen the Messiah coming for the church. I have seen the church being taken. It is time out for sin in the church i have come to announce it it is time out i have come to tell this church the church of christ in namibia i have come to tell you something amazing here that now choices have consequences did you hear me whatever choice you make it will have consequence and the consequences i'm talking about here are eternal consequences did somebody hear me here? I have come to announce the church in Namibia that look, the perpetual sexual sin, the perpetual sexual immorality the Lord has shown me in this land and church, that the wages of that also is death. I have come to announce the pulpit to shake them like this and announce them look now time is over for preaching the big things in namibia big homes i don't know everything else they say he's saying however time has now arrived to prepare the holy bride of christ the perfect church the believers that are holy and to prepare a people unto the lord that, that, that i have come to announce without any ambiguity at all clearly announce that that on a personal basis each of you have now to make personal decisions from today on if you want to continue in those churches where they are teaching lies you know what amazes me is this that some of the lies that you feed on, even you know that this thing that he's saying is a lie. That's what amazes me. That even you have capacity to tell a lie. 
How can you continue feeding on lies then? But I've come to announce to you the time is over. If you are a pastor and you belong to a pastor's fellowship where there is no agenda for the coming of the Messiah. There is no agenda for calling the nation of Namibia to national repentance. There is no agenda for returning the church to the way of holiness. There is no agenda for installing the authority of righteousness in the church. If you are in that fellowship where you are saying, whom should we invite? How much money should we collect? What, what, what? If you are doing that money thing and they are discussing which new person came to his church, which woman came to his church, which wealthy who came to his church, if you are in that type of fellowship, look at this now. I have just come to set you free. Yeah. I've come to set you free. Yes, I've come to tell you that on the matters of eternity, now you can make a personal decision. Yeah, that one you can now decide. Yes, and then God will help you. He'll bring for you a pastor's fellowship of more. No. The devil is a liar. Yeah. Because the church actually belongs to the Lord. And the Lord is the Lord of the harvest. And when you begin to preach this message and you turn away from that kind of fellowship of pastors where they are talking about women and money and who is what, what, where, today, now, when. When they are discussing that and you move away from there, you might establish a bigger pastors fellowship that is preparing the agenda for the coming of the Lord in Namibia. God will reward you because of time time this is the hour now when you stand righteous you know god will come to you and say look i have to answer everything she's praying for because i have to defend that righteousness she's preaching god now comes out to defend it defend it well he that's okay may i have a different calling though but it's not, the rules are the same he that speaks with you lives that life God has to defend everything he says to make a testimony, a lesson to all the others. That, excuse me, this is the right way. Yeah. You compel God to now do things that you say. Because the desire of your heart will now be whose desire? God's desire. <laughs> You did not understand this. Oh yes. I said, I'm going to Windhoek to have a straight talk with them. Straight talk. Because the first time I came here, I dusted my feet like this and walked away. I could not stomach it. Yeah. I could not stand it. Hey! How do you teach people how to fall? And the Lord, you know, he shows me things before I come. So he was telling me that you are going to those people. All those are false people. But just go. But it was unbearable. So at the end, I dusted my feet and stepped out. But look at the wonderful second opportunity for this nation to pick up the end time revival of righteousness and prepare for the kingdom of God. Look at this beauty, the God of a second chance. Look at this now. That you may have a straight talk with the Lord and the Lord say to you that look watch listen the kingdom of God is near and in that kingdom look at this now there will be no sinner inside that kingdom there will be no sinner in that kingdom I saw no no, 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 please no. There will be no sinner. So we'd rather shed off sin now. Wow, thank God we are hearing this before the door closes. Because I don't know whether I'll reach all the nations. So tell me, what is the problem here? You uh, can then, hear, but you cannot speak. Oh, you can hear? You are popping. 
but he cannot speak. Okay, thank you very much. So you can hear. Okay, that's very good. And he cannot speak. Can you? What's the name? Paulus. 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 Okay, Paulus, can you focus on me like this? Me. Paulus, talagutat. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. So now look at this. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. The tongue, the tongue. Yes. Open your mouth. Akam. 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 You know me. Aha. Okay. Okay. Say ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. ba, ba. ba, ba. Yes, 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 yes. Ah. Very come, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me now. Say. Again, focus it. Ba, ba. Ba, ba. Yes, yes, yes. That's very good. Let, no, I, I want to continue with you here. I'm, I'm also coming to every child here. I want to continue my precious son, Paulus. Again, let's repeat ba, ba, and then I'll go to other words. So, ba, ba. Ba, ba. That, that's all right. That's very good now. That's very <laughs> he himself is very excited. Can you focus on me, Paulus? What? Ba, ba. But that's excellent. That's very powerful. <laughs> and he's pleased. He's very happy, really. Now, listen to this now. Can we? Uh, okay, I'm going to another word. Ma. 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 My name is Valeria. I'm from Mankinga. So, yeah. The problem that brought me here is I cannot move. I cannot walk. Yes, for how long have you had that problem? It started December 2015. Yes. So this is the time you cannot walk, you cannot move. I cannot work, walk. I was just using this walking stick. What is the doctor saying? What is the cause of that? The doctor did not say anything. I was hospitalized for two, for two, for two weeks, but he did not tell me anything. Do you have any pain right now? Yeah, I have pains here. So your pain in your hips and in your legs. Yes. Let the cripples get up and walk in the mighty name of Jesus. As we begin this healing service, let the cripples now get up and walk. And right now I'm lifting up my left prophetic arm towards heaven to help you. Everybody do what you could not do. That is where we should begin from. Try to do what you could not do before. Do what you could not do, somebody. <laughs> Let her go. Let us go, don't touch her. Do what if she's walking, let her walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody do what you could not do. Look at this in our eyes. The miracles have arrived. The miracles of Jesus. Just keep walking. Keep walking, my daughter. Keep walking. Walk, baby. Walking better. Look at that now. Better, Hallelujah. better. better. Better, better. Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. And I want to come, 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 come to me. Come, come to me. This is the leg I was talking about. This is the leg I was saying in the conference. This is the leg I talked about in the conference. Hallelujah. Keep on walking, baby. I may not know what is going on here. We are going to take testimony in a moment. But for now, keep on walking. 
Keep on walking, baby. Walk with me, baby. Let us walk together. You can turn. We walk together. We want to walk. Come this way. Okay, and then you this way. Let us walk now. Let us wait. Can we wait for another one? Okay, we are walking. <laughs> I may not understand much, but the Lord understands much. <laughs> Hallelujah. You recorded? I recorded how she could not walk for many years. This one, even this one came with crutches. You could not walk without the crutch, my Lord. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Come, let's walk. Ah, hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord.